So welcome back to Walking Reviews. I'm here at the MWC 2018 with Qualcomm and I'm going to give you guys a little guided tour around the Qualcomm booth and a lot of people think that Qualcomm are all about processors for phones but there's a lot more going on. The chip can do a lot more and also they make a lot more kind of chips. Stuff for cars and all kinds of stuff like that. So I'm going to walk around now with you guys and show you what it's all about. So I think people generally think Qualcomm only make CPUs and GPUs for smartphones, but they do a lot more than that. To be honest, I bet Qualcomm must be getting annoyed with consumers only recognizing them for their Snapdragon processors for phones. And for that reason, I'm going to try and not mention smartphones in this video. Did you know Qualcomm are behind the scenes in most of those fast chargers you're using today? This is just the tip of the iceberg. So the connected car, a prototype Escalade to be more specific. This has a bunch of Qualcomm processors inside, the Snapdragon 828 to be precise, similar to the ones you see in smartphones. I know, I said I'd try not to bang on about smartphones, but in this case, it was unavoidable. This Escalade has seven monitors with Snapdragons powering the infotainment systems, and it has Qualcomm's very own cellular V2X chip, which Qualcomm call the nervous system of the car. It will allow the car to communicate with other connected devices on pedestrians, cyclists, and even with other connected cars. And Qualcomm envisage a day where cars can even communicate with traffic lights. And I'm sure London's council could afford to upgrade their traffic lights, especially with the amount of parking tickets they've given me over the years. Anyway, the idea is that the car would receive 5G on the move which could mean up to 4.5 gigabits per second download speeds. And with that many screens and that much data, that would make this the perfect multiplayer mobile online gaming session mobile. Or you could use this car for business conferences and other productive stuff like that. Much more fun. Now check this out, the Qualcomm Halo. It's basically wireless charging for your electric car, but this isn't done conductively. It's actually done using frequency resonance charging using a magnetic field. So no more wires, just drive over the halo point and your car will charge. It supports up to four levels of charging between 3.7 kilowatts and 22 kilowatts. And they've even partnered with Formula E. Some of the cars over there are already using Qualcomm's halo. Now onto 5G. Qualcomm had their first prototype and reference design on display. They even had a working X55 5G modem receiving up to 4.37 gigabytes per second. And this 5G speed is being achieved with an 800 megahertz bandwidth and a 28 gigahertz millimeter wave frequency. And what does that even mean? It's fast, that's what it means. It's very fast. When we talk about speeds, we can see up to 10 times the speeds of current 4G, and that could mean you could watch a whole lot more funny cat videos, no buffering. Qualcomm also had a bunch of pre-release high capacity modems and a showcase of current modems from various manufacturers with Qualcomm Wi-Fi processors inside. And also on display was loads of stuff related to mesh networking or smart home as we like to call it. Now this is really cool. Personal computers powered by Snapdragon processors similar to that seen in smartphones. Oh, These processors are running full Windows 10 and the real advantage here for the end user is the battery life. With the Snapdragon processors not draining so much power, I hear a PC running on one of these can last around five to nine hours longer than a competitor's compact computer. And I heard this PC can stay alive for an entire month on standby mode and that is crazy. Another advantage of the Snapdragon powered PC is its LTE, so 4G capabilities just like a smartphone. You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious! I know, I said I'd try not to mention it, but again, it was unavoidable. The only downside to LTE for me is it would probably mean one more pricey monthly fee, maybe. We'll just have to wait and see. Now this bit was a bit over my head, but Qualcomm have a bunch of stuff they're working on that they call mission critical. It's basically stuff like factory equipment that communicates over 5G instead of normal wired networks. Think of an entire factory running autonomously on 5G. Some call this the fourth industrial revolution. First it was mechanical, then it was electrical, then digital, and now connect. Tickle. Connected. Connected. Qualcomm have partnered with Bosch and they're working on this right now. 
Now Smartware, Qualcomm make chips that go inside all of these watches. So watches that work almost like a smartphone. Sorry. I know. So these watches all have Qualcomm chips and they communicate between other smart devices and networks. Some have GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi and stuff like that. Also, they provide the same chips to designer brands for their smartwatches as well. So you might be paying top dollar for just a designer name. However, the processor inside remains the same. So the smart money is on how smart you want to be. Also, Sony use Qualcomm Bluetooth chips in some of their audio products, and I hear they're pretty good. Now my favorite, you know they used to call me the games master, right? Anyway, Qualcomm had a bunch of AR demos running, showcasing the power of next-gen AI. Also on show was Qualcomm's Centric 2400, the world's first ever 10 nanometer server processor for cloud gaming. And of course, Qualcomm have delved into the world of VR. They had some really cool demos on show. I didn't have a go though, because I didn't want to show anybody up with my games master skills. But I must say, it's impressive to see what's possible with the power of the Adreno GPU. And they also had some console quality games on display. Running off, yep, you guessed it, a smartphone. Now have you heard? Qualcomm's chips actually process a lot of your audio experiences on your tablets and smart devices. They had a few demos on display for this too. And also, the Snapdragon features voice interactions, and this was present in that crazy Escalade at the beginning of the video. So you could basically ask your car to wind down the windows, turn the lights on, and it even uses echo cancellation, so even if you've got music playing or there's loud road noises, it's still gonna pick up your voice. So anyway, that's pretty much it. I've tried my best to summarize as much as possible of the Qualcomm booth, and I hope you guys learned something. But you know what? I can't wait to see what they do with 5G in smartphones. Oh, come on! So that's it for this guided tour around the Qualcomm booth here at the MWC. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and you will be one of the finest subscribers known to man. And I want to say a big thank you to Qualcomm for bringing me out here, and Hotwire, you guys are legends. Anyway, see you guys in the next one. Don't be late.